Assalamu alaikum dear students. We are going to do the pathways for visceral pain transmission as well as gate control theory. So when we talk about the pathways of the visceral pain transmission, first this is the reading material, chapter 49. It's the last chapter in relation to sensory system according to the 13th edition of Guyton. Let's talk about visceral pain first. Now have a look at this question. Localized injury to the visera when the surgeon cuts the gut does not cause severe pain, very mild to even none, but ischemia of the gut does cause severe pain. What do you think is the reason? Think about it. Yes, cutting through the visera will damage or will irritate only or will stimulate only few free nerve endings because it's a cut, how much area it will cover. So only few nerve endings. Additionally, the visera itself, the gut itself does not have a lot of receptors, pain receptors. Ischemia of the gut now will cause release of a lot of chemical substances. Now, these chemical substances, they will have diffuse stimulation of the free nerve endings of the pain receptors. It will cover more area, so more receptors are involved. Even though the gut has few receptors, but when the area that is affected is more, because there is ischemia, there is there are chemical substances, so definitely, the pain will be more. Second question, cutting of the gut causes less pain as compared to cutting of the peritoneum. And what's the reason? Yes, the number of pain receptors, the number of free nerve endings is much less in the gut as compared to the peritoneum. Peritoneum is rich in free nerve endings. So visceral pain can be caused by the same causes as we discussed about mechanism of pain. It can be by ischemia. For example, gut ischemia, it can cause pain, visceral pain, because the release of the chemical substances, as we mentioned in the mechanism of pain. Chemical substances, for example, stomach. Stomach, there is HCL that can cause in gastritis, in peptic ulcer, it causes pain as well. Spasm of a hollow viscous, gastrointestinal tract pain, cramps, these, they are example of visceral pain as well. And why there is pain in these cases? Because as we mentioned, it's considered as both mechanical stimulus that has direct stimulation of the free nerve endings as well as indirect by causing pressure, mechanical pressure on the blood vessels, ischemia and chemical substances are released because of the anaerobic, uh, anaerobic metabolism and there is irritation of the free nerve endings. Another cause of visceral pain is over distension of, over distension of a viscous. Can you think of an example? Hepatomegaly. There is distension. There is a stretching of the peritoneum that covers the liver that causes pain. Visuals are usually insensitive. Liver. If you cut through the liver, the patient will not feel pain. Lungs also the same. However, the patient still gets pain when he or she has hepatomegaly. Why is it so? Because of what we mentioned previously, that there is distension of the covering peritoneum. When the peritoneum that covers the liver and peritoneum is rich with free nerve endings. When there is hepatomegaly, there is stretching of this peritoneum, there is a stimulation of the free nerve endings, and there is sensation of pain. Now, concentrate in this question. Usually, when there is a disease in the visera, pain first is felt as referred pain in the area originating from the same embryonic segment. However, afterwards, pain is felt also at the area where the pain is originating. Why is it so? So, for example, let's take an example of appendicitis. In appendicitis, initially, the pain will be felt in the umbilical area as referred pain. That is the initially felt pain. Afterwards, if the patient doesn't get the treatment, the pain will start with, uh, will be felt in the like, uh, right iliac fossa at the place where the visera is, the viscous is, where the appendix is. So, why is it so? Because initially, the appendix was inflamed. Okay? So, it has few free nerve endings. So the pain is felt as referred pain. The referred pain is the true visceral pain. However, after some time, if the patient is not treated, the inflammation will go to the peritoneum that covers the appendix now. Peritoneum gets inflamed. It's rich in pain receptors and free nerve endings. So there will be pain at the right iliac fossa. And that is not the true visceral pain. That is the parietal pain. So the visceral pain pathways, there are two. One is the true visceral pathway because of the pain of the viscera, because of the damage of the viscera itself. And it is usually the referred pain to the skin area, which has the same dermatomal origin as the viscera. The second pain is the parietal pain. The parietal pathway, which is severe pain, because the parietal layer 
that covers the vidra gets inflamed and it is rich with pain receptors and that that leads to severe pain which is localized over the painful area where the pain originated is the visceral pain highly localized no it's not why because it's type of chronic pain it does not end in the somatosensory area moreover in the acute pain, we say that along with the pain receptors, some touch receptors, mechanoreceptors are stimulated, and therefore there is at the same time stimulation of the DCML. Whereas in the visceral pain, there are no uh, mechanoreceptors, there are no uh, DCML pathway. It doesn't go from the viscera. So the pain is not highly localized because the viscera have no other receptors except, except the pain receptors. Our second important topic is gait control theory of pain. Now, this topic is not in Titan. You can find it in Mushtaq Physiology, Volume 2, Chapter 7, pages 289 to 290. However, if you have different edition, definitely the pages will be different. And it's better to understand it in the lecture. What does pain control theory say? Have a look at this diagram. So the pain fibers, as you are familiar with, they are small fibers. Here we are talking about chronic pain, uh, chronic pain. So we have the C fibers. C fibers are small. And then even the fibers that are within the spinal cord, they are also small as compared to the fibers for tactile sensations, which are large fibers. Now, when the small fibers, the pain fibers, they are stimulated, what happens is the signals will go to the first order neuron. From there, it goes to the second order neuron. If you remember in the analgesia system, of CNS, we talked about that pain inhibitory complex in the dorsal horn spinal cord. And we said there is a neuron there that is part of the analgesia system and it releases encephaline that causes pre as well as post synaptic inhibition of the pain pathway of the second order neuron. So, what happens is when the pain fibers are stimulated, this pathway is stimulated as well as there is inhibition of the pain inhibitory complex. So when there is inhibition of the pain inhibitory complex, it will be inhibited. So there is no inhibition of pain. So these channels, gates, which we can say gates will be open and there will be transmission of the pain sensation and the pain will not be inhibited. Now there is another scenario, which is, for example, in acupuncture. You heard of acupuncture when some needles, you know, they, uh, by doing some type of touch, it helps in decreasing the pain. How? Whenever the tactile fibers are stimulated, this is the first order neuron, which is the dorsal root ganglion. Now, as you know, they ascend the dorsal column medial and muscular system. However, when they enter into the spinal cord, they give branches, or we call it, or we call them as collaterals. These collaterals, what they do is they activate the pain inhibitory complex in the dorsal horn of spinal cord. So they activate this pain inhibitory complex, which will releases encephaline, which will cause inhibition of the second order neuron at the pre as well as the post synaptic uh, membranes and this will lead to decrease in the sensations of pain decreasing the transmission of pain we can say closure of the gates so this is the gate control theory excess impulses in the small fibers which are the pain fibers causing the opening of gate and pain sensations because there is also inhibition of the pain inhibitory complex whereas excess of impulses in the large nerve fibers which are the tactile fibers there will be closure of the gate, non-production of pain because of the excitation of the pain inhibitory complex, because of the encephalins that causes pre- and post-synaptic inhibition. And this is the mechanism by which acupuncture causes decrease in pain. We can say also it causes lateral inhibition. There are small topics that you might want to have a look at, but then in writing, for example, hyperalgesia, you might be asking by bar or it can come in insecurities. Hyper from Algesia, algesia means pain, hyper means excessive sensations of pain, hypersensitivity to pain. It can be primary because the receptors are hypersensitive to pain. And we mentioned that there are some neurotransmitters that cause hyper, they enhance the sensitivity of the receptors to pain, which we, if you remember, we mentioned prostaglandins and substance P. Burns also, you will notice that patients who have burns, the burn area, the receptors become hypersensitive to pain. There is secondary hyperalgesia when there is lesions in the spinal cord of the thalamus. If you remember, we said that in brown Sequard syndrome, whenever there is lesion, usually a lot of patients will have hyperesthesia, hyper sensations. There will be increase in the sensitivity to sensations above the level of lesion. And that will include also hyperalgesia, which is also the pain sensations will be enhanced. There is a disease we call as herbie zoster 
shingles, it's also called. It's because of the Hadith zoster virus. It's a very painful condition. There is infection of the pain neuronal cells in the dorsal root ganglion. The pain actually is segmental. It's along the distribution of the spinal nerve and half of the body. And it circles halfway around the body. What does it cause? It causes rash and vesicles. There is another condition which is called as trigeminal or glossopharyngeal neuralgia. There is severe pain on one side of the face. Usually, sometimes it's rare. However, what happens is that the patient is eating and suddenly will have severe electric sudden pain along the distributions of the fifth or the ninth nerves. It's severe pain. It's usually because of mechanical stimulus, stretching, for example, chewing food. So the food will touch the tonsils, which will cause severe pain. And the, it will touch the places where there is distribution of the fifth or ninth cranial nerves. The treatment for this is cutting of the nerve from the hypersensitive area and only the sensory option a portion will be. Sometimes uh, doctors will start with drugs. However, if they're not effective, they will be cutting of the nerve from the hypersensitive area, only the sensory part. Thank you. If you have any questions, we'll discuss in the lecture.